Welcome to our two-part series on exposure. I hope you guys have already watched part one. In part one, we talked about setting up the camera, getting to a manual display brightness, using your highlight and clipping alert in camera, setting up a neutral and very flat picture profile so you get the best information possible, and then exposing using your histogram with live view or just take a shot or however you wanna do it. But in this video, we're gonna go a step further because now, Using our histogram, we're going to talk about, well, how should you properly expose in each scene? So let's go ahead and do this. First, let's go ahead and pull up some of our images because I want to show you, compared to what we're seeing on the computer, how that differs between what we're seeing in camera. Now, you guys already saw in the last video, we talked about how, well, here, if I press J to pull up my highlight and clipping alert, Nothing here is clipped in the shadows, just a very tiny bit that's blue, and our highlights are still completely retained. But when we looked at the highlight and clipping alert here, well, we can see the shadows are pulled all the way to the left, and we can see that those highlights, they're just blinking like mad, as if we've blown out everything on that side. But we haven't. The detail is still there. We can see it. It's here, okay? So I want to show you again some of those differences in camera versus in our computer and what we see. So let's look at some other shots. I have those images actually loaded up here. Uh, and let's look at this one because this is a good example of it. So once again, this is an image of my kids. And if I pull this into Lightroom, you can see that there is some detail being lost. So with J pressed, I can see that yes, in my clouds, I'm losing some of my highlights. But is it nearly as much as what's shown here? No. I still have a lot of detail everywhere else. Like, look at this. I can pull the highlights and whites down, and everything that's saying that is blown out over here is not. That was the point in setting up that flattened out picture profile. When this image was shot, the picture style was set to something a little more contrasty. So the information it was giving us was not ideal. But regardless, it's still a decent exposure. Let's talk about where it should be. So what I want you guys to do when you're exposing, and look, if you're used to a different methodology of exposure, I'm not telling you to change it. I'm telling you that this is a way to get uniform, high quality images out of any camera, regardless of what you're using. So if you're already comfortable with something else, by all means, dude and dudette, just keep doing what you're doing. But here's the deal. We've heard of exposure techniques like exposing to the right. I've talked about it before as well. When we expose to the right, what we're trying to do is basically preserve all of our detail in the image by saving all of our dynamic range, okay? So, so here's the deal. Exposing the right means that in a scene like this, I'd be shooting right here. I'd be two and a half stops underexposed with this particular photograph in order to preserve the highlights that are up here in this range. That might be fine, for those of you that are shooting Sony or Nikon, where an image to this level of underexposure would actually come out good. If you're shooting Canon or plenty of other brands, I'm sorry to say that if I lift this kind of exposure by going to the shadows, I get green and muddy tones in my images. They're just not going to come out well, okay? So exposing to the right can work for some people and it can work depending on the scene, the situation, what you shoot, everything. But it's not a good general rule for everybody because for a lot of you, it's not going to yield good shadows. Instead, I want you to actually expose to the left. Now, a lot of people confuse this with underexposing and it's really not. What exposing to the left means is I want you to bring your shadows all the way up. So when you're exposing in camera, whether you're using live view, you can also just pop a shot, press information and look at the info on your histogram. It doesn't matter. Do it how you like. But when you expose, I want you to push those shadows all the way to the left side of the, uh, of the frame, okay? So all the way over here without clipping or blowing out anything. So for this image, the proper exposure might have been another half stop under. Then you're gonna let your camera make and model. Pick up as much of the dynamic range in the highlights as it can. Are some of your highlights gonna blow out? Maybe. It depends on which camera you're using. If you're on a latest A7R 99, whatever it is, if you're on a Nikon D10005, 
you're gonna have all your highlights. They, they have incredible dynamic range. But no matter what, you're making sure that your shadows aren't gonna get muddy while allowing your camera to pick up as much highlights as it can. Having some blown out highlights, that looks okay. That looks natural. That looks normal when we look at it from a viewer standpoint. Having clipped muddy shadows and green tones and noise, that does not. That's why ETTL is a better kind of general rule for any camera to get the maximum amount of detail and dynamic range. Now this is gonna look different in every single scene, okay? So this is a shot by one of our own from David Crew, and this is kind of a nice controlled lighting situation where, you know, in this image, this is very much an HDR scene. Our highlights are very bright, our shadows are very dark, the sun is behind our subjects. So you end up with this U-shaped curve in our histogram where the shadows are intense. We have tons of shadows. On the right side, we have quite a bit of highlights. So you kind of have this U that goes up on the highlights and it goes up on the shadows and it's fairly empty in the middle. Well, your histogram is gonna look very different with a shot like this. So again, exposing to the left here, we probably would have brought this exposure down maybe a little bit more, like down right here where the, ex the, the shadows are pushed right against that left side and you can see that a little bit is getting lost now. That's, that's right about right. And it's retaining all the highlights because again, this is a Nikon file and Nikon can retain it all, it's there. But it looks quite a bit different. So every scene is gonna look a little bit different. So trying to create a rule on like, well, your histogram should always be U-shaped, that really doesn't work because this isn't a U-shaped histogram. It kind of is lumped over here in the highlights and the midtones. This is a high dynamic range scene. And actually where it was shot was a little bit overexposed. So if I pull this down, almost about one stop, that's where we get to that shadows right against that left edge. And you can see it right there. This was a little bit underexposed. So using the same rule, I should have pushed this a little bit to the right right about probably here. And again, that looks completely different. That's not an HDR scene. This is shooting with the light during dusk. Okay, so this isn't a high dynamic range scene at all. This shot, that's pretty well maximized. You can see just a tiny bit of shadows going blue right there. Everything is good. So what are the benefits of doing this? Well, I'm gonna show you that with the use of visual flow presets. Now we've been working with the develop team uh, to create visual flow. We've, we've created a patent pending methodology for developing presets by lighting condition. Now I'm, I'm showing this because you don't need to go out and buy them. If you like what you see, then great. But I'm showing you it because I, I, I think you can utilize this technique, whether you want to create your own presets or jump into what we've done with visual flow, that's up to you. But using this technique, we can now create presets based on lighting conditions that adjust exposure based on kind of statistical averages of how much the exposure should be adjusted with those scenes based on exposing the left. We couldn't do this on exposing the right because every single scene is dramatically different when you expose to the right because highlights are always completely varying. But we can when we expose to the left. What this means is if I have a soft light scene, I can press soft light and the image is automatically adjusted for everything contrast, color, everything is already added in. Now I'm using the modern pack, which is a, a, a look that is based upon kind of a, a warm and contrasty, like kind of uh, beautiful modern style. But when I get to a HDR scene, it's gonna apply that same look, but I'm gonna choose HDR. And what it does is it lifts the shadows and retains the tones. And in one single freaking click, we get to a final image. All I gotta do is choose my temperature. I don't want it to be as warm as I shot it. I shoot warm sometimes just because I like the way it looks when I show it to clients. But from there, I've got a beautiful file and processing it is done in one click and I've maximized detail. I mean, look at this. People always wonder, is there gonna be noise in the shadows? No, when you're using these techniques, there is not gonna be noise in the shadows because you are maximizing your detail and dynamic range based on the camera's make and model. You're not doing ETTR, which works on some, but not on others. Look at this, this is a David Crew shot. Okay, I'm gonna apply soft light because that's what this scene is. The exposure adjustment, everything is automatically dialed in based on an averaging of these types of shots. Look at this, HDR, I'm gonna click there. I'm gonna adjust the temperature right to here. 
we leave exposure and contrast up to the user so that way and, and I would recommend doing the same if you're going to create your own presets that do this leave exposure temperature contrast that should be dialed in manually look at this one this is kind of this hard light coming through the leaves right I'm going to choose hard light image is done that's the benefit of shooting it properly in camera. This is the benefit of getting the right exposure, maximizing quality and maximizing detail. And if you follow these steps, no matter the camera, make, model, no matter the lighting situation, everything, your entire workflow is not only gonna be smoother, you're gonna reveal image quality that you never thought possible out of any camera that you're using. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this two-part series on exposure. If you did, give us a like comment below, subscribe to the channel, share our content. And if you enjoyed our education, be sure to check out slrloungeworkshops.com. If you like what you see with visual flow tools, you ain't seen nothing yet. Go check it out. vfpresets.com as well. My name is Pi and I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Peace.